did they finally do a Lord of the Rings? I think that was actually a good episode. I thought it was actually pretty good. We complained way less, for one. I mean, there was like obviously some stuff that happened that I was like, that's silly. Come on, show. But I think I could forgive a lot of it a lot easier because I was like, I didn't mind everything that came before and after. And I'm wondering, is that because the episode itself was good or is that because we actually just stuck to like one solid story? I think it's partly both. I think it's because we're focused on one thing. The writers are actually able to do stuff with it. Mm -hmm. Like they can't be incompetent or surely they wouldn't be put in charge of things. It's just they were trying to do something that Are wasn't... Are you sure about that? ...that wasn't for that genre, whereas now we're actually able to focus in on something. They're even able to write stuff. For the most part, there was a lot of interesting stuff going on here, and only, I think, one or two sections where I'm like, oh, everyone's stupid. Okay, cool. Imagine if everything was the exact same, except we'd cut to, like, Poppy walking in the desert or something. This is one of the first episodes where we've had literally no Poppy, no Gandalf. Mm. And even Durin's drama was quite small scale. I think it was better because people changed states. Mm -hmm. People always complain about nothing happened. Yeah. But it's obviously stuff happens or there would be nothing on the screen. <laughs> yes. It's that characters don't change. Yeah. And we've spent six weeks with stagnant characters doing the same thing. We made a big point of Keller Brimbor saying, oh, I can't make the rings, makes the rings. Oh, I can't make the rings, makes the rings. Galadriel being like, I need to kill Sauron. I need to kill Sauron. I need to kill Sauron. Mm -hmm. Whereas in this done, people actually do things that have a difference and they have a lasting effect. And... It was really nice. Yeah, it's like when you when you write with consequences, like you couldn't write this episode without consequence. Mm. Like you see a lot of characters actually being their characters because they have the opportunity to like show who they really are. They don't have to just spin their wheels so they can actually make a difference in their own story, mm. which makes them feel active and interesting. Because even though we know that Gil-Galad, Galadriel, Elrond, Celebrimbor, they don't die their actions actually have consequences for once. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, they're not going to beat Sauron on this episode. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's kind of a thing that isn't going to happen. But they actually do things that matter. Uh, it did make me think one thing. You mentioned that this season should have just been focused around the battle. Mm. It could have almost been like the battle was taking place in the background because yeah. then that would have given us direction. I think we would have still spun our wheels too much if that happened. Yeah. But what I do think is they should have made this season three movies. This one season? Uh, maybe just the show in general yeah. should be three movies per year. Yeah. And then that way they could actually hone in on something they want to do. So we could get this movie could have been the first movie. And then if you actually want to explore not Gandalf and Nori, you could do that in their own little movie. Mm -hmm. And then you could also do a third movie just because people love trilogies. We actually start with Celebrimbor in his own little magical world, mm -hmm. just being happy. And we actually sit with him for a fair while and he's making these rings, toiling away, and he's slowly noticing kind of time loopy yeah. problems. He's basically noticing glitches in the Matrix mm. that is Sauron's illusion. And it's the most I've liked Keller Brimbor as well. Yeah. Well, for one, he's he's smithing. It's not just pour ring into mold, go, ah, finally. He's doing metallurgy and like smelting and hammering and toiling away. But then he's also using his inquisitive mind because yes. he is one of the oldest and smartest like elves and also the king of Eregion. The mayor of Eregion. The mayor of Elf Town. If, we <laughs> if you removed the first six episodes, mm -hmm. I would think Keller Brimble was a smart guy. Yes. Like it wasn't just Anatar being like, you should make the rings, dude. And he's like, all right, cool. <laughs> Seeing him work things out, I did think that if we had seen more of this and seen it for longer, we could have picked up on the fact it was fake first, which might be interesting. Yeah. Like, if we saw that the mouse did the exact same animation, we would be like, shit, are they saving money by reusing the clip, or is this the Matrix? Yeah, yeah. And that would have been more interesting than us already knowing. But I wanted more of it. I, yeah, I, I basically just wanted this scene, but I wanted more of it so that we cottoned on first. <laughs> the fact that we already knew that it was a lie yeah. makes it way less interesting. We don't get any payoff for figuring yeah. it out but we get to see Calabrimbor figure it out. So they really could have butchered it and had him not figure it out and him be like, <laughs> oh no, like when it like, gets revealed to him. But like yeah. we get to see him like figure it out, do things to figure it out and then like confront Anatar yeah. about it. It's also hurt by the fact that we already knew it was fake. <laughs> he kind of figures out something was wrong last episode, but then <laughs> they're like, no, no, it's fine. And he's like, oh, okay, goes back into it. Back to sleep, grandpa. The war's over, Grandpa. He's like, okay. So it really is this episode is a standout for sure. Mm. 
he's looking around the mouse is like doing the same thing over and over and i think the one thing that clicks him into that is in the matrix is that the subscribe button hasn't been pressed why haven't you pressed the subscribe button yet are you in the matrix whoa what color is your bacardi <laughs> we see him mark the candle mm -hmm. it, he doesn't say oh time isn't passing it's a show don't tell mm -hmm. and again it's such a small thing that they just don't do in every other episode. Every other episode is very much like, we're either not going to tell you and you're not going to be able to figure it out because it's stupid. But also, we don't spend enough time with characters for them to mm. have a whole thought, you know, and figure something out. How are you going to show someone doing something, figuring it out, and then confronting someone when they get five minutes of screen time, like three times an episode? Yes, whereas with this, we actually sit with Keller Brimbor by himself in a room, mm for like an extended period. Damn you show, I'm really angry at the show now because they've they've shown what they had the ability to do yeah. the entire time. It really is potential realized, which just means that everything else was potential wasted. It's kind of what we've always been mad at all along. Like we've always been mad because they've always had the budget. Mm -hmm. They've always had the look. Like everyone always says wigs of power. I don't get it. I think the wigs look fine. Yeah. I think the ears are a little funny on some people, but generally the look of the show is the best thing about the show. Yeah. And they kind of get to show that off in most of the episode, which is a battle. Yeah. And it's a pretty good battle. It's not like, it's not Minas Tirith. It's not Helm's Deep. We don't get the full shebang, but for TV, it's pretty great. I think it's also because, yes, we had last episode to like ponder on it, but it's like they figured it out and the battle started straight away. So it's like, it was a very improvised combat. I think that's because they did drag out the start mm -hmm. over like four episodes, which hurt the show as a whole. But this episode, it was good because it was like, oh, the battle's here. And mm -hmm. you can kind of forget about the fact that the elves didn't see them like just walking up. Yeah. It's so strange that in season one, the orcs whole thing was tunneling in to invade that would have worked perfectly elves can't see you if you're in the ground mm -hmm. like what's the one thing elves can do see for ages what yeah. do your elf eyes see and also they're the people of the woods you think they'd know everything that's happening in like the woods yeah, and like they've got a killing floor like they've got a big gap in a river and then trees it doesn't hit the heights of like the big game of thrones battles like battle of the bastards uh the battle of the wall mm -hmm. where they all come in like, you even have a little bit of a moment later on where a hill troll comes in and messes a bunch of people up. It's still not quite as good as the giant pushing through the wall gates. I don't mm. know if you recall. And that's, like, a really cool moment there. They don't quite hit that height. But also, that was, like, eight years ago at this point. Yeah. So I, I was ready for a new, a new cool big boy mm -hmm. beating up little boys. We get a cool moment where he grabs an orc, throws him at Arendir. Who I guess we'll touch on real quick. Aaron is still pointless. Yeah. Well, I don't know actually if he's alive. Yeah, he gets he stabbed gets, and he Adar stabs him with away. one arrow and then he stabs him with one arrow and then um he just kind of throws him. So Aaron Deer kind of just rocks up to save Galadriel mm -hmm. from like one little bout when Galadriel's pretending she's Splinter Cell or like Ezio and she's just like walking through with a cloak on, mm -hmm. being like, I am one with the orcs, the orcs are with me. Uh, and she gets caught by a lady orc it's nice that the lady orcs have jobs yes thank goodness they're on corpse disposal duty <laughs> and also finding out who the spies are in the camp yes and pointing out people with pretty elf hair but that's jumping fairly far ahead mm. but also most of the episode is a battle so yeah. i guess you can't just talk about the battle the whole time yeah although it is enjoyable you get some very cool moments uh one of my favorites was the elf archer that they talk up a bit about like only you only need one arrow that's all mm -hmm. you need she gets absolutely boromir yeah shut the hell out of Elrod's like take your shot and then like the, the camera's like Zhoot! and she's just like pin cushioned but then she pulls out one of the arrows she got shot with lights it on fire shoots it into a pitch tank or like the fuel tank mm -hmm. of one of the war machines which don't know why it has it's just, i think it's like a tar yeah i don't barrel. know why it's just got a tar barrel there but she goes and I'm like, up. it was a good hero moment. We didn't really know the character, but it was still cool enough to get by. Mm. It was a very cool shot when they're getting destroyed in the city and then pans to like the elves are all there. Like the cavalry has arrived. And I'm like, okay, here we go. Like they're going to do like a Gandalf charge and like just like cut through everybody. But then that gets cut short real quick <laughs> when it's like, we have a woman in a cage. I didn't love that. Like, I know Elrond and Gilgalad are fairly fond of Galadriel, but risking an entire elven city just because they've got her at knife point where you could have obviously wiped through them. Yeah. 
Ugh. It's a bit like, oh, we've decided to be stupid because, like, it also doesn't help that I, we know Galadriel lives. Yeah. It's like just a few of those things that's like, okay, well, this is obviously for story reasons, which like brings the episode down like a little bit. I still did enjoy it. Aaron Dia saves Galadriel and he's like, there's the guy I want to kill. And he's like, <laughs> I, he has a bow. He has an, he has many arrows and he has a clear shot at Adar. Yeah, Adar's on his knees. I know he can catch arrows. He's done it a few times in the show, but not if he doesn't know it's coming. Arendir is like, a, he spent his years as a ranger. In season one, Arendir's like, oh, it's been 25 years since I've had any action. Mm. I'm so bored in this tower. But then he does badass things. Well, he kills three orcs in very quick succession. And he saves Gladriel, who, how does he know that's Gladriel? She was all cloaked up. She was Ezio'd. But also, Gladriel being held captive is kind of stupid because we've seen the elves do, like, gravity-defying backflips. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, ah, no, my hands are bound. Yeah. I am defeated. <laughs> like, okay, babes. What did you think of Elrond having a, a private meeting with Ada and then making out with Gladriel to give her, like, a lockpick? I get the idea behind it, where it's like, oh... We know that they're not actually in love, mm -hmm. but the fact that Adar buys it and is yeah. like, yeah, you can go chat to this person. Even he also pulls the pin off that he gives to her, like in plain view. Yeah. You don't think Adar, this character who's supposed to be like a really smart he like, guy. He even says, I can outmaneuver you at any turn. Like, the lover of the orcs. God, speaking of his love for the orcs. It's so funny that whenever we cut back to Family Man Orc... <laughs> Just that one guy being like... <gasps> all either of us could think of was, but he has a baby! He like, can't die! He has a son or daughter and a wife and child! He has a wife and kid at home! But, because he's the bad guy, and we're not thinking about that seriously. We're not thinking like, oh, this poor man. How about when he goes, Father, do you still love me? Yeah, you, you said you love us. And he's kind of bailing on it. Um... One thing I did like about him was that I was thinking during the week, portraying the orcs as a whole, as family men, mm -hmm. is stupid. Because they're not a race of people. The orcs aren't a race. Because they're elves, they've just been corrupted. Mm -hmm. So they're a mockery of the elves, is I think how they're technically stated. Say a country turned a bunch of our people uh -huh. into like evil robot demonic murder cyborgs yep, 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 and yep. put them against us. I'm following you. We're not like, oh, but they're family men. Yeah. They're just guys. We were talking about their penises. <laughs> yes. We're like, what do you reckon an orc dick looks like? They've got to reproduce somehow. If they're a mockery of the elves, surely their cocks are like ducks where it's like a corkscrew or something. Mm, or like a cat and has like the reverse hooks on yeah, it. Yeah, they've got like evil penises probably. <laughs> yeah. And so that they shouldn't be displayed as family men. <laughs> they might have sex and reproduce like men and yes. elves, but that doesn't mean they have to love... But I was thinking showing one orc as a little bit different to the rest would be mm -hmm. okay. And that's kind of what this episode has changed to. They focused in way more on that one family man. And yeah. it was like, okay, everyone else loves war. Like they slaughter like an elven woman that gets knocked from the balustrade by mm -hmm. Keller Brimbor in a hilarious scene that is also dumb. But we'll talk about that in a sec. But they're murderous. They're very, very murderous. Everyone except this one guy. They're licking blood off their knives. Yeah, he like licks a knife, that one guy. But this guy is like, oh, I'm a family man. Which reminded me of the game Shadow of Mordor, where every orc is despicable. Mm -hmm. But there's this one orc that is still despicable, but he hates every other orc because they bully him. Yeah. So he's, his name is Ratbag, and he helps you out so that he can get more power. You like kind of like him because mm -hmm. he's the enemy of my enemy and that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. So like that's interesting. And that's what this episode did. They were like, not all orcs, one orc. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I can deal with one orc being a family man, except the fact it's in full view of everyone else, and he's like, ah, me and my son, and dad, do you love me? But Keller Brimbor knocking the lady off the... Oh my god. Because, like, Adar, like, twists his hand, and then she's like, and, like, flies off of, like, a... <laughs> Once Keller Brimbor figures out that he was bamboozled, mm -hmm. he runs out of the place, and he runs to the not Galadriel, mm -hmm. and is like, babes, Anatar's a bad guy, he's Sauron. And she's like, ah, but Anatar told me you're crazy now. Therefore, even though I've known you my whole life, mm -hmm. I will not listen to you. I'll listen to the hot guy that I just met. Hell I'm yeah. like, okay, so everyone's an idiot now. He's the mayor, remember? And he turns to his troops and he's like, arrest Sauron. And they're all like, I don't know, man. He told me you were crazy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, that's stupid. But 
then she gets knocked off the stage and it's hilarious for a minute there like mainly like shock hilarious and Keller Brimble gets one other fantastic moment it is a little dumb that Anatar locks up a smith in chains mm-hmm. when he has hammers and chisels and yeah fire. he gets all of his tools and he's like ah, I can't break these bonds but he has a little hardcore moment where he cuts off his thumb and the build up to it was quite well done like yeah. he's like trying to escape and then he's like trying everything and then you just see him look at his thumb and he looks at like the vice and we're like Oh, is he gonna? Because again, that's consequences, which mm-hmm. is something this show hasn't had. Yeah. Well, because like he cuts off his thumb, that can't come back. Yeah. It's like he needs a thumb to grip a hammer. <laughs> yes. His hands are his tools. Yes. That's a state change that nothing else in this show has done. Yeah. No characters really sacrifice anything. What do you think was a cooler slash funnier part of the episode when not Galadriel gets flung off the rampart or when Elrond pins the orc to the trebuchet and he gets flung. <laughs> you called that so and well. I, I was like, he's going to stick. I'm like, the that's in focus. The just in the background. Mm. But like, it wasn't like he stabbed him and the, the stabbing triggered it and he launched it. Mm-hmm. Elrond had to stab this poor guy, this family man, <laughs> to the trebuchet, walk around the back, spend time unraveling it. There's still a fight going on. Yeah. And he's like, nah, man, fuck this one orc. Like, this guy sucks. And then... Oh, because he killed his horse. Yeah. So it, he was out it's for blood. It's personal. Yeah. He John Wicked this motherfucker. Uh, all the armor looks sick. I did enjoy the elven armor. A lot better than the um, Numenorean armor. It feels like they took notes because like everyone ripped the, to shreds the Numenoreans just wearing like jumpers with scales on them. Mm. Whereas like elves look sick. Mm. They made the fight during the day. That's yeah. such a big thing that just doesn't happen. And even at night, there was so much fire that you could see things. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is where the money went. I can finally see where the money went. All those people talking in rooms, I think might have... No, it wasn't worth it for it this. Did, it, was, it did not offset <laughs> I this. I can't bring that. But if this was a movie, if this was like the middle movie in a trilogy, uh, and it's an hour, and it feels like a full hour, there's down moments, but all those down moments feel earned. But you're, at no point was I like, uh, like check how like time check you know yeah. or like oh we've only got 10 minutes left I guess this is wrapping up it flowed good I did constantly expect Gandalf to rock up though not Ooh. on set but we'd just cut to Gandalf in mm-hmm. room and they'd be like by the way Gandalf is looking for a stick still but that does mean he's in the finale oh very true that does take a lot of energy from this episode and sucks it out of the finale you have to remember next episode we're gonna get a little bit of Numenor, uh, a little bit oh, of Sildor, a little bit of Poppy. I can barely even remember what's happening in Numenor. Like That's next week's our problem. That's true. We're going to focus on this episode where we were happy. Tell me about what the dwarves are doing. We do get some dwarves. Um, <laughs> we get a scene where a bunch of warriors come to take over the mine and it's Deesa and Durin being like, you shall not pass. It's probably too many scenes considering what happens there. Mm-hmm. But because they've made the decisive action of they're no longer going to mine, Durin is adamant now. He's not just like, oh, I have to get the ring off my dad. He's like, we're not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, I quit. We're stopping the mining because we don't want to piss off the Balrog. Even King Durin's men realize Mm -hmm. that he's being a bit too greedy. So, yeah, there, there is, again, there's a state change of everyone was just spinning their wheels, being like, oh, the ring of power is bad. We shouldn't do anything to finally... They're going to do something. They're going to go to war, but it's foiled. Yes. Uh, I guess King Durin, in all his might, you see him brandishing his axe. And then Durin Jr. rallies the troops. Everybody with me, you know, does his big speech and the people of khazad are behind him. They go from like 10 dwarves and we're like, that's not very many. And they're like, oh, there's a lot of here. It's the rest I guess like, it's an okay. echoey, it's an echoey place. Yeah. But then um, just as they're about to leave to back up Elrond on the dawn of the third day, the advisor guy runs to Durin, covered in blood, and he's like, the king's cut through my men like some wheat stalks. Daddy's gonna dig. Yes, he went to go dig. He's gonna go continue the dig himself. He's really greedy. Yes. He's gonna release that bow At that point, it's like, do you just leave him? <laughs> but I guess he's doomed. He'd doom everybody in Khazad Doom. But so. yeah, there is. it's a very stolen moment of Elrond waiting for the dwarves to appear on the sunrise. And he's like, he looks over and he's like, look to the north instead of look to the east. Durin is coming. And it's like, ah, oh, and he's not there. And you're like, you can see the, the heartbreak on Elrond's face. We had a little scene earlier where they, where they finally meet up again. And he's like, ah, old friend. He's like, you perfectly quaffed, rippling <laughs> abs, sexy six foot four son of a yeah, bitch. Yeah, get rid of the wife. Let's just ship them. Literally. I, I needed to see more of them in a room together this season. And we only got like this one 30 seconds. Elrond was pretty hard done by for every episode except this one. 
because he was a main character in season one. Mm. But in this season, he annoyed Gil Galad for like 10 seconds by like, no, don't use the rings. Mm. And then became the lead general, second in command. Vanished for a few episodes, yeah. yeah. And now he's the commander. And also like one of the most proficient warriors they have. Even though even Adar yes. was like, you're better suited with a scroll than a sword. And he's like, you haven't seen me with either. And then we see him slaughter everyone. Mm. How kind of heartbreaking is that scene at the end where the king's like, form ranks and you see and there's like 15 of them and you're just like that's that's a good reveal it I don't, is a good i reveal. don't know if it was intentional i cannot guarantee whether they just like ran out of extras yeah but they were like oh no no we, we'll have the 15 of you but then we'll quadruple you guys we'll just copy and paste <laughs> yep. and they just forgot and they're like fuck because there were so many at the start because mm. you are cutting back and forth a little bit you don't see like a big slaughter. You originally see them standing side by side. No idea why the sunlight doesn't affect the orcs. I think it's, um, there's so much billowing smoke from the city that it, yeah. it covered the sky. That's what we didn't talk about. Tactics. <laughs> tactics. This fight has tactics. It's not just two armies run at each other mm -hmm. and die and you're like, oh no, this shit I don't care about. Because mm -hmm. battle scales are stupid. Like, you even see it when all the elves rock up. It's like, oh, there's 10,000 of them. My brain can't comprehend mm -hmm. one yeah. of those guys dying. Like, if it's not my main girl, I don't care. Mm -hmm. And they kind of solve this by having, like, little objectives along the way. One thing that does it fantastically is Mission Impossible 7, where it's Henry Cavill has to beat the shit out of Tom Cruise. Like, that'd be a cool fight, that'd be okay, but they're fighting over a nuclear device. They're, like, constantly scrambling for yeah. the nuclear device. So it's not just their lives at stake. It's not like they're scrambling for a gun, where if one gets a gun, the other dies, fights over, I'm like, cool. It's if they get that, the whole team, the whole wife, they all die. Like, so many people die. So I'm yeah. like, that's cool. And they do that in this by the orcs can't get into the city super easily. They're doing a bunch of trebuchet shots and they're knocking down buildings and stuff, but they can't get in. Mm -hmm. There's one bridge. So instead they turn their trebs on the mountain, knock the mountain into the river, and then the river stops and then they can just cross, yeah. which is a very cool idea. It's a good stage to get to the next fight. It is a little bit ruined by whichever VFX artist decided that the rock they knocked down should be a single rock balancing on a really, yeah. really small rock. And like all they had to do was knock that and mm -hmm. then it fell. It really was just, this was the natural rock formation they had to knock down. I'm like, ooh. All I could think of was like ways they could improve it though. Like I did enjoy the battle and stuff, but I really would have enjoyed that the orcs were having trouble crossing like the riverbed because it was like all muddy and stuff and like we see a couple of people like sink into like mud but i would have really enjoyed some of the elves like take off their armor because it's like hard footing fighting in the mud but because elves are so light-footed they don't sink into it right i would have really liked like i would have been like that's such a good time it would have been a cool advantage that they yeah. could have like yeah the orcs are like trudging through and these elves are just like like they're still nimble footed but like they take off their armor to do it because it would have weighed them down like that would have been i don't know how cool. weight works in lord of the rings like when yeah. you have stuff it's like if a race is wearing it then it like nullifies it yeah because you like you see legolas like walking on top of the snow mm. but does his gear still weigh things but he's only wearing like cloak just like stuff just a loin he's just wearing a cup <laughs> we also get them hammer pegs into a regnon's wall mm -hmm. and then use ballistas to like reverse launch them yeah. out so they tear down sections of the wall so that's cool that's like another stage that's something for them to stop again slightly ruined by the fact that elrond's sword is too blunt to cut through rope it's like i understand rope when it's like really like lots of rope like turned into a yeah. big rope yes but it's like this is like the this fine elf elven with an elf weapon craftsmanship yeah and like especially because we've seen elf weapons cut through everything mm -hmm. like they just use them as like a hot knife through butter so Calabrimbor's finally had enough and he's like you know what i did finish the rings but i'm gonna yes. steal them Calabrimbor and anatar kind of strike this deal where because they don't know that this isn't sauron's army Calabrimbor he says to Calabrimbor finish the rings and I'll spare your city. Yeah. I hope that's what it is. You said that and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Mm. He tries to destroy the rings in fire and he's like, hmm, that doesn't work. Sorry, but the greatest of all Elven Smiths is like, I'm gonna put these magical rings into a campfire. Mm. They didn't disintegrate. This mega alloy that I made. Hmm, <laughs> why is it so mega? But he, he bags them all up. He cuts off his finger so he can escape. Escapes through a little sewer tunnel. And then just before he's lynched by his own men, 
um, our girl Galadriel just comes out of the blue because she knows a secret tunnel, a secret yeah. entrance in, and she says, "That's the king of Region, the uh, mayor, the of greatest Elf Town. of all Elven Smith." You, when you said that, it yeah, perfect. it's because that's what every time they say his name, they say it in like one flowing thing. Maybe that's a Tolkienism. Yeah. I don't know. It's like to say someone's title. Then he he gives her the rings. And then she's kind of tasked with getting rid of them, destroying them. Yeah, but we, we still know that they fall into the hands of all the men yep. at some point. But we also know that this show doesn't give a damn about law. So they sidestep. They give themselves another season, mm-hmm. basically, by Galadriel just being like, these rings are mine. So they'll be like the journey for the rings. Yeah, they could drag it out a lot if they want. But we did read, during the episode even, that season three isn't green lit yet. <laughs> But I, that's kind of fucked up. Because, like, they, they talked from the beginning about five seasons. That is so fun. Imagine a show ending, like, right here where this is. Like, they're like, the stakes are so high. Season two just finished the biggest battle ever. Yeah. And then they're like, no, we're not going to green light. No you. one's watching our show. Please oh, watch our show. Holy moly. Just, I think they should just green light five seasons. Streaming series have so much money. Come on, it's Amazon we're talking about here. Green light the whole damn thing. I haven't liked a lot of it. Mm-hmm. But I would rather it gets finished and be bad yeah. than not finished and, like, still bad. And we'll have, like, a whole subsect of people being like, imagine if you just let them finish it. Season four and five, maybe they hit the stride. Mm. And then it's one of those shows where people are like, dude, you have to watch season one, two, three, and four. Like, there is some worth here. I think a lot of it is a waste. But I can't get a Patterson cut where they make it good. If it doesn't get finished, if it at least gets finished, someone can supercut it or say, hey, watch these episodes, they're canon, everything else is filler. I did kind of get this weird feeling like at the start of the episode where I was like, this feels like a Lord of the Rings. I even noticed the music a little bit more. Mm. Like, I don't know, some nice flourishes in there. But yes, this did feel a bit more Lord of the Ringsy, a bit more heroic. Maybe that's all it was. It was people actually got to be heroic in this yeah. instead of just show off Because even Gladriel three episodes ago, she killed a bunch of orcs, but it wasn't heroic, even though she was, like, letting her friends escape. It really was just, like, I'm going to do backflips, front flips, slide along the floor yeah. and kill these people because I'm on a TV show. Whereas this actually felt like it had more of a reason for being, I guess. Yeah. If it goes five minutes into next episode, they can say it was a three episode. <laughs> Which they're going to do. Again, still didn't hit the heights of Game of Thrones battles, but easily the best episode of the show so far including season one. Yeah. We had setups, we had payoffs, we have a beginning, we have middle, character and end. Developments. We have characters changing states. Man, this was a TV show today. <laughs> yeah. Tell us if you actually enjoyed this one like we did. And did you enjoy the ending dwarf metal? Mm. Like a good, Thanks, honestly, Bear. a pretty good way to end the episode yeah, was. was just dwarven metal as the orcs triumphantly bash through. I'm like, mm. shit, all right, that did get me in the mood. And tell us if you think that yeah, does this just ruin next episode? Because it <laughs> can't possibly be as as full. We have to get Gandalf and I'm scared.